Hi guys, I'm here at my um, local Irish pub, I'm getting ready for St. Patty's Day, uh, which is next week. And um, I'm here. If you can't tell it's an Irish pub, this is how you this is how you can tell because this is an Irish pub. But today I'm going to teach you how to finish up your um, Celtic knot box. Hi guys, so these are the things that you're going to need to uh, do a full finish on your box. Um, get a paintbrush, some glitter, um, maybe some rhinestones, um, puffy paint. Since this is a St. Patrick's Day celebration uh, purse, we're going to use um, Irish colors. And then I just got this Mod Podge. Mod Podge. I don't really know how well it works. Um, I tried it out a little bit, but um, I don't. I don't know if it's enough to get the idea of how well it works with these products. And then you have sandpaper right here and your box. And I'm going to uh, sand this box down and uh, then we'll get started. Thanks. Now guys, um, just so it wouldn't take too long, I already primered this um, with white paint. Um, there's a couple kinds of paint you can use. Um, you can use tempera, which is non-toxic. Um, also, you can use puffy paint, which is the same as acrylic paint. Um, you can use acrylic paint. Um, oil paint takes a really, really long time to dry, so I don't suggest that. Um, and you can also use like a paint marker. Um, and I, I decided to use spray paint, um, and trust me, it's as interesting as they say, watching uh, paint dry. So um, I thought I wouldn't put you through that, but here I'm going to um, sand this down. As you can see, I kind of covered the design, and um, let's, let's go. Now, if you've um, begun this project any any which way similar than what I'm doing, um, you realize that it takes a lot of strength and effort and muscle power to sand this down. So, um, my suggestion for that is that um, you maybe um, get the help of an adult um, or use uh, tempera paint. Tempera paint is um, much easier to sand down. And um, now I'm going to go ahead and um, do the next step. Thanks. Here I've put my um, green paint into a container um, so it's a little bit easier to maneuver your paintbrush. And um, I'm going to paint the edges green. Do this in quick motion. Now the sides are done, and while you're painting um, the sides, you definitely want to have the box slightly open, or you can even slide a piece of paper in there, um, just so you don't paint the box shut, because that is um, a problem. And then when you try and pull it apart, if you can, it kind of pulls the paint apart with it, and um, pulls the paint off. But another thing about puffy paint is remember that it is fabric paint so it is permanent if it touches your clothes make sure you're wearing a smock um, ask your your guardian but I'm gonna also paint the back and I'm gonna do just a light coat because I'm kind of going for the shabby chic look which is kind of an antiqued um, almost 
folk art. Uh, you see a lot of antiques that actually have this look just because they're so old. Now, if, um, if you paint it on, you know, your, your colors right, then it should dry pretty quickly because you want to use a light coat um, because this is puffy paint, but it can be used for other things besides fabric. Um, now, this is my paintbrush. After I'm done with this project, I think I'm going to throw it away because it, uh, once puffy paint gets on your paintbrushes, it doesn't work as well. And this is dry, so I can put it back on the table, which, by the way, needs cleaning. <laughs> it's been sitting out here all season. <clears throat> okay, so now I put some orange paint into my painting cup. You can use um, paper cups, Dixie cups. actually going to wipe off the brush after I put it in orange paint and this green is dry so um, it's not going to mix but because I kind of want just that brush look to it and this is um, kind of a shabby chic finish is what they call it and um, you see a lot of antiques with this finish. Um, sometimes it's an original finish. Sometimes people redo them and make them look like an antique, which is kind of what I'm trying to do. Since the Celtic knot is a very old design, You can even look up um, some of the things that they do at Stonehenge. And if you've never heard of Stonehenge, it's really cool. Um, I went there in 2005. Um, fortunately, I was able to afford it um, at the time. But now uh, I'm still kind of trying to pay off that trip. And let's see same on this side and it's a very very old monument um, for a while they didn't really know what it was used for and you know there's still a lot of mystery shrouding the um, the landmark but um, some people think it was a site for um, religious things. Some people think it's just a work of art. Some people think aliens put it there. Some people think it's a science project. Um, an article just recently came out and it basically said that um, it was to kind of show how sound moves throughout the the valley there and through the hills um, and somebody back when they made it wanted to prove that sound carries in strange ways and, uh, I think we're almost finished here And then I will show you how to turn this into a purse. But um, I think I'm actually going to seal it with the Mod Podge, um, which is can be used for a sealant. Um, also, you can use it in certain types of jewelry. Um, 
like the bottle cap jewelry. Maybe I'll teach you guys, but I know there's a heck of a lot of, um, you just put it on not too much, just enough to be able to coat this and you want to make sure your brush is clean. So I'm actually going to clean off my brush before I do this, but, um, okay, give me a minute. As you can see, I just kind of dabbled it on a little bit, um, but I'm going to put a light coat, and this will seal in the paint so it doesn't flake or rub off, but um, it, the paints that I chose are kind of um, good for this, this sort of project, but it also gives it um, a kind of shiny effect, which actually isn't all that antique but we'll see how it goes. And just use even brush strokes and make sure that you know you don't have any um, pooling of the Mod Podge. my green's coming off but it actually doesn't look half bad and as far as this project goes anyway and I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to go ahead and do that to the other sides so the last things you're going to need to do this are um, two of these I think they're called eyes eyes screws it yep. um, they're like a screw there but it's different up on the top it's a loop and you're going to need some sort of um, handle for your purse you know you can make it longer um, but this will be a handbag and you'll possibly need pliers um, this is to open up the links so you can actually put it onto this. So we'll actually put this on first. And this wood is soft enough. You should actually just be able to push it in with a little bit of pressure the entire time so that you can kind of make it um, swivel down into it like a, when drilling. You know, you don't want to keep it on the same plane because otherwise you don't get the swirl and then that's how um, your threading gets stripped. And this seems to be working good because I've only got two of these. <laughs> and these come in different sizes too, so if your um, handle is a different size, then it's alright. And you kind of want to make it even, so... Make sure you, you could mark it with a pencil and use a ruler as well. And I had fun doing this. Um, so I think maybe in the future, um, if you guys are up for it, I might um, do a different kind of box purse. Um, you know, with a different theme. And you just pull that apart like so and clip it on there like so and again try and make sure that the link ends are as close to each other as possible so this doesn't fall out and there you have your purse and if you open it up this is something I did while uh, I was waiting for the other part to dry. And I put a mirror in there and some glitter. So if you guys um, enjoyed this and you'd like to win this purse, um, I'll try to get it out to you before um, St. Patrick's Day. But I guess it just kind of depends on 
you know, if anybody <laughs> even signs up to win it, um, the other contest that I did, no, no one has yet. So, um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this, and, you know, if anything, um, you know, maybe you can use this and uh, make something really cool. So, um, I'd love to see some pictures, and please send them. Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day, and have a good time. And if you're going to the parade, uh, look out, <laughs> look out for the Irish, trust me, I know. Okay, bye guys. Thanks guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and have a happy, um, and safe St. Patty's Day, and I will see you next time.